Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. I was recently able to attend another motorcycle show and swap meet. This time it was the classic Japanese motorcycle show and swap meet in Leesport, PA. The show is organized by my friend Gene Reeser. Gene is a regular in the classic bike scene here in central Pennsylvania. He also deals in quite a few of the classic bikes and restores them and buys them and sells them. Although the weather did not cooperate with us this year, it was still a really nice show. There were lots of vendors, lots of parts. I met lots of great people and I really enjoyed the show. I even found a part for one of my classic bikes at the show as well. In this video, we'll go through and take a look at the bikes that were there, and I'll talk a little bit about each of the motorcycles featured. The first bike up here is Kawasaki's beautiful 1979 Z1 Classic. This is a 1000cc bike, and it was the first Kawasaki to feature fuel injection. The Z1 Classic was based on the Kawasaki KZ1000 LTD, and besides the fuel injection, some of the neat features are the chrome insert on the gas tank in the gold painted wheels. It was a real treat to get to see one of these in such nice condition. The second bike up here is a Kawasaki Z1R. The Z1R is a sporting model of the KZ1000 line. And what really sets the Z1R apart is its very angular styling. I think these are also a really cool looking motorcycle. Up next, we have a Kawasaki H1 500cc triple. This one is in beautiful condition. These motorcycles were known for having power output that far exceeded the stiffness of the frame or the brakes on the bike. These bikes were called nickel rockets. They were inexpensive speed, but they did not have much sophistication in the brakes or the handling or the ride of the bikes. One cool feature of the Kawasaki triple two strokes is the three exhaust pipes coming out the back. It's asymmetrical, but it looks really cool. The next bike featured here is a 1974 Kawasaki Z1 900. This is the bike that really displaced the Honda 750 four-cylinder as the top dog in the American market. These bikes were smooth, they're reliable, they're beautiful, and they offered a level of performance right out of the box that no other manufacturer could compete with at the time. This is an all-original example, and it's such a treat to get to see this at the show. Next up is this Kawasaki KZ1000 LTD. This bike was put together by Mr. Jim Hammers. He's a local Kawasaki guru. I think the factory paint job on this is a really cool design. Next up, we have a little 67 305 Dream. This one was for sale at the show. This is one of Honda's historically significant models and Honda sold lots and lots of these. And these bikes really established Honda as a major player in the American and European markets. Next up is a cool little two-stroke Honda. This one is a 50cc liquid cooled machine. It is the NS50F. It's a 1990 model. I don't remember ever seeing one of these in person, so it was a real treat to get to see this at the show. Such a cool little bike. A bike that was at the show but not participating in the show was this classic Honda ST1100. I've had several of these over the years and I recently purchased the ST1300 and reviewed it on this channel. You can click the link above to see the review of the ST1300. Moving into the Yamahas, there was a beautiful Kenny Roberts Edition RZ350 at the show. I actually looked at purchasing one of these many years ago and as I was riding it, I was thinking, man, I could really get into this. This is such a cool little bike. I was planning on using it as a commuter back and forth to the office. And I came up to a stop sign and was immediately enveloped in a cloud of two-stroke smoke. Then I thought, nah, this is not going to work as a commuter to and from the office. So I ended up passing on it. But these have since gone up in value. And it's such a treat to get to see this bike at the show. This beautiful Yamaha dirt bike is a 1974 SC500 two-stroke, and I bet this thing was an absolute monster off-road. Moving on, this 1970 Yamaha CT1 was really cool to see at the show. This bike was raced at AMA flat track and TT scrambles. It was custom built for racing by Merlin Miller. It was sold by Merlin in 1974 and actually found again 45 years later in a barn and in 2019, this bike was restored by Merlin and Ken Miller. But it's a really cool bike with a really neat story behind it. 
I thought this Yamaha was really intriguing. It's a 350cc two-stroke machine. It's an R5, and it's a direct predecessor to the RD350 Yamahas. This is an original paint bike. I thought it was fairly clean and really a neat looking example. As I was getting ready to roll out of the show, two other classic Yamahas rolled in. The first one up here is an FJ1200. I currently own an 86 FJ1200 myself. You can check out my review of that bike by clicking the link above. Sitting next to the FJ1200 is this really cool looking Yamaha Seika 650 Turbo. Not only do these bikes have that really funky 80s styling to them, they're also one of the few turbo bikes that came out in the early 80s. It was really great to see this one at the show and to see all the little cool details on it. As it got a little bit later in the morning, more bikes rolled in. And despite the crummy weather, this was such a cool motorcycle show to attend. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. If you have not attended the Leesport Classic Japanese Motorcycle Show and Swap Meet, I recommend giving it a shot. It's a fun time. There's always lots of really cool motorcycles to see up there. There's lots of parts. And I love the Swap Meets because it's like a treasure hunt. You just never know what you're going to find at the show. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, enjoy the ride.